and welcome to this next presentation. In this uh, presentation we're going to discuss the impact of rotor bar bridges on torque development in integral horsepower machines in pulse width modulated inverter environments. This uh, study was performed by both myself and Zachary Zich, one of the electrical engineers for Dreisulker Electric Motors. We uh, started out by testing some electric machines and we had a special rotor manufactured to create a thicker bridge than normal in order to see what the impact was in the operation of the machine. This particular case this is a 380 volt 90 Hertz 658 amp constant torque 5400 RPM machine. We used a Yaskawa P7 drive which is a 500 horsepower drive with 675 maximum uh, amps motor itself is a 1.0 service factor. It's a 1Y lap winding and it's got a stator bore of 0.2667 meters and a stator length of a 0.4318 meters. This is a Dreisilker designed machine and uh, in this case we were upgrading to a 60 degree C environment. Uh, the optimal air gap for this 50 Hertz machine would have been 1.16 times 10 to the minus 3 meters or about 50 thousandths on a side. This, uh, the problem with that is in this type of environment, especially in the inverter, the tighter the air gap the more potential noise you have because of permeance harmonics and frontal waves of magnetic waves inside the machine. So uh, at the end of this presentation we'll show you the post work and the noise that you'll hear from the machine because of the 2 kilohertz signal used on the inverter. We start out with a 0.2642 meter rotor diameter and then we increase the air gap uh, after in order to decrease the noise and also to reduce the rotor bar bridges to the original design. This case the rotor bar bridges the bridge depth is 2.794 times 10 to the minus 3 meters or 110 uh, uh, mils which is relatively thick and um, the rotor bars themselves are a solid form instead of a key shape or some of the other forms that you will sometimes see in a rotor. In this case is a very straightforward design and on the thick rotor uh, the thick rotor bar bridge was important to evaluate uh, because we wanted to see the impact on torque uh, and also the impact on efficiency and so on. In this particular case uh, you can see the picture up top of the cutaway of one of the rotors with the thick rotor bar bridge. And the challenge with this is that you end up with permeance harmonics inside the uh, air gap uh, on the rotor itself. And then also you have an issue where the fields that cross the rotor bars first are deflected off to either side by the thick steel. They want to flow around the rotor bars instead of cutting through them uh, until the rotor bar saturates. So it'll defect, deflect at a tangent or an angle to the actual rotor bar until the steel saturates and at what at, at that point then it will pass perpendicularly through the rotor bar. Now you need those fields to be as strong as possible to actually generate the current in the rotor bars in order to get it moving. Now when we did the literature research on this particular project we found that there was a number of studies uh, that had been performed and known issues but most of the work had been done using finite element analysis and just straight calculations. Uh, most uh, any of the actual experiments were usually done on small partial motors and other simulated operations. In this case, this is a real designed machine. All of the, uh, several of those papers specifically identified that um, that uh, the issue would be worse in an inverter environment, but none of them had done any work. Total, we could find about a dozen papers published in the last uh, 20 odd years. The, re the result of the rotor bar bridge is that it causes increased leakage reactants 
in reduced radial pressure waves uh, and as a result will lower the noise a little bit. Now if you want to have the closed rotor slot uh, it will also decrease the power factor you end up with the bridge and then it also will end up start uh, reducing your starting torque a little bit um, which means that could be a benefit in some applications where you're across the line where you want to reduce that starting torque for a pump or fan or some other type of uh, uh, variable torque in, uh, application but on drives the drive has to compensate for that additional material and what it actually sees is that the motor appears magnetically smaller than it really is. Now the smaller air gap uh, we end up with the increased permeance harmonics which generates noise. Now when we increase the air gap size you end up with uh, a decrease in power factor and a change in efficiency. However in the smaller air gap you end up with the same thing. So it becomes a balancing game. So what we end up doing is uh, we end up cutting down the rotor bar bridge until it's thinner but still has the mechanical strength necessary for the speeds we're talking about. In this particular case 5400 RPM in a uh, in a 10.4 inch diameter rotor is a significant amount of inertia and the material has to be able to handle that speed without tearing and, uh, and the rotor bars coming out. So the first testing was done with a deep bridge with a small air gap. Now the test was performed unloaded and uncoupled. The drive would not operate in this, uh, in this particular mode. Instead we would get an output phase loss drive trip which basically means that the drive thought the motor was too undersized for it. So it basically thought it was less than 5% of the drive's capacity for that size machine. We were able to put a load of 100 foot-pounds or pound-foot torque on the machine to be able to start it because by slowing down the rotor, by not allowing it to turn, you're, you're saturating the top of the slot much quicker and it draws more current and that current, that resulting magnetic field crosses the bars and off you go. Now once we got the motor up to speed the running current was about 138 amps um, at the 100 pound-feet and the bearing temperature stabilized at 50.6 centigrade. At 500 foot-pounds at 45 hertz or half speed uh, the objective was to overload the motor to cause it to heat up a little bit. The motor operated at 670 amps and the temperature increased and continued to increase. And the power, measured power factor using the Alltest um, Pro online unit was a 0.598. Now what we did was we optimized the, uh, the rotor. So we did lose some power factor um, and when we calculated that we said okay it's not going to be much of a drop so we went with the 3.17 times 10 to the minus 3 meter air gap which is about uh, 125 uh, thousandths and then we uh, we ended up reducing the bridge depth to uh, it comes out to be about uh, 20, um, uh, 20 mil uh, on the thinnest part 25 where it's a little thicker. When we started this one up the bearing temperature stabilized at 41 degrees centigrade uh, which means that reducing the harmonics reduced the uh, the heating um, and the rotor and the shaft and thereby reduced the stress on the bearings. And at 500 pound-feet and 45 hertz we dropped by 50 amps the winding temperature stabilized at 46.1 degrees centigrade with an ambient temperature of 21.1 degrees centigrade. So total temperature rise of 25 degrees centigrade um, is what it stabilized at with a load, with the motor overloaded. Uh, this was important because uh, we were looking to 
um, uh, maintain a very low temperature rise uh, for this particular type of environment. So when I compare them, the first thing was a start at no load, both tripped. And then when we did auto tuning um, and the videos at the end, the first one is um, auto tuned once. The second one, you'll notice the noise goes away. That was auto tuned uh, three or four times uh, to try to make sure that the drive and the motor matched. So the auto tuning, the drive detected that the small air gap machine would draw 131 amps no load and the large air gap machine would run 171 amps no load. The actual no load currents were 40 amps on the small air gap which obviously is is very low and 84 amps on the large air gap. Now the bearing temperatures uh, leveled off at 123 degrees Fahrenheit for the small air gap and 100 degrees Fahrenheit for the large air gap under load at the uh, under overload conditions actually and um, in the case of the 45 Hertz operation we got to 670 amps under the small air gap large bridge and 620 amps under the very large air gap thin bridge now the thinner bridge is the standard design for these machines the power factor came out to 0.598 for the smaller air gap and decrease slightly for the larger air gap. However, it's also important to note that noise is in an energy and a reduced efficiency. So when we calculated the manual efficiency or when we calculated the efficiency on these machines, um, the larger air gap actually had a better efficiency across the operating range, although the 100% efficiency was just slightly below that of the smaller air gap but not significant enough. Now what we did is we figured the cubic inch uh, ab current absorption which came out to 2.1 amps per cubic inch at 500 pound feet and 45 hertz. Um, the starting current absorption was 1.8 amps per cubic inch and the drive was set at 2 kilohertz. So the drive is going to make magnetic field noise during operation. Now with the smaller air gap, that noise was significant. With the larger air gap, um, we were down within a reasonable audible range. The effect of the thick bridge included reduced starting torque, a higher running torque, higher operating temperatures. At 90 hertz full load, operated below the 600 amps, and we had a temperature rise under 25 degrees centigrade. Now if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us through www.drysilker.com. Uh, you can contact me directly at hpenrose at drysilker.com. Now what we're going to do is uh, present two short videos um, the first one will be the operation of the machine um, with the uh, with the drive auto-tuned only once and you'll hear some vibration noise. What we did was we ramped it up and ramped it down and found that the resonance noise that you actually hear is not a bearing but is instead um, uh, a vibration that occurs because of the drive mismatch. And the second one is after it's been auto-tuned uh, three or four times uh, and the, you'll notice that while the machine noise is there on ramp up we turn off the machine on ramp down to confirm that there's no mechanical noise. So please enjoy and thank you for uh, enjoying this presentation.
Now, is that the drive or the bearing? When it hits 90. Okay, when you're ready. Is the drive ramping it down? Thank you. 